Dr. Jack Sarfati created the legendary Physics Consciousness Research Group at Esalen Institute back in the 1970s. The last time he was on the program, it was to talk about a book, an excellent book by an MIT physics professor and historian named David Kaiser called How the Hippies Saved Physics. It tells us a story about uh, the creation of the faster than light communications uh, industry, a billion dollar industry. But Dr. Sarfati is well known for looking into and writing about the physical nature of consciousness about time travel and about, and about the physics of flying saucers and you can bet he's got some thoughts about the tic tac and related uh, incidents that uh, have gained prominence in recent months jack great to have you back on the show thank you thank you george and if i may can i make a quick summary of uh, the history channels on a, um, not identified about the tic tac uh, sure quickly get yeah. my message. If, you want, if you want to start okay. there sure Okay, so one, I fully support Luis Elizondo's investigative efforts. The Tic Tac provides my smoking gun for the physics, and they are a potential military threat, as Elizondo has been saying. However, and this is the most important thing that I want to get across to that tonight. It is not true that the physics of how the Tic Tac flies is not understood. I, uh, I understand it perfectly in terms of mainstream theoretical physics of Albert Einstein's gravity, James Maxwell's electromagnetism, David Bohm's quantum mechanics, and the solid-state physics of metamaterials. I first lectured on metamaterials for UFOs in 2011. When General Pete Warden, uh, who used to run the U.S. Space Command and then was directing NASA Ames, flew me and Doug Trumbull, Doug Trumbull did special effects for Space Odyssey, to Orlando for the DARPA NASA 100-year Starship meeting. So Tic Tac does not move through space. Tic Tac folds space. It's a warp drive of what Hal Putoff called metric engineering in such a way as to get to where and when it desires and here's the big thing, with tiny amounts of energy because of the metamaterial hull or fuselage, there is never any G-force inside the Tic Tac. In fact, it is zero G-force there, no matter how large the apparent G-forces look to the outside observer. The Tic Tacs sometimes will shift shape, or rather they appear to shift shape, because of Einstein's gravity lens effect. This is a well-understood phenomenon. Now, and here's the important political and military implications. We can build our own Tic Tacs quickly, and we better start now, because Vladimir Putin scientists have a head start. The race is on, and the USA has not left the starting gate. The Russians are translating my ideas on all this into Russian as we speak. In fact, Putin's agents uh, videoed me twice in the last couple of years, the first time about um, this very topic or the topics related to it, and the second time was a political thing I won't get into. So, okay, I'm finished. So go ahead, George. <laughs> well, I, I'd like to get your reaction. I don't know if you were able to listen to the first hour with Dr. Michael Masters talking yeah. about the uh, different time travel scenarios, but he yeah. comes at it from sort of a biological and anthropological uh, angle about how humans might evolve to look like what we think of as aliens. Does that make sense yeah, to you? Well, I, I agree. Uh, I listened to it. I heard it. And uh, I agree with it. basically everything he said. I've been saying pretty much the same thing for years independently, which is a good thing. And um, the only one thing I, I would add, he was talking about how, the, how the, the grays might naturally evolve, you know, from us. And everything he said is correct, of course, using Darwinian revolu um, evolution. But, of course, now with genetic engineering, we could uh, speed up that process, you know, with, with this CRISPR, the genetic cutting technologies so that um, uh, yeah so I basically I agree with everything you said and also your your uh, the guy coming on after me uh, Hoffman I've been citing his his the his paper all the time now that's uh, you know very much part of my story it's uh, it's more evidence and uh, in the past I've been kind of hesitant about all this but the tic tac has changed everything and the important thing is that I predicted the metamaterial aspect of it you know, years before the tic tac uh, disclosure was made and you know Eric Davis and Hal put up there that the, the fact that that there's a metamaterial uh, construction to these tic tacs or it appears to be uh, fits uh, perfectly well with what I've been talking about what my research says well let's get into that a little bit do you know what the metamaterials are and why they would work in this way 
I know why they would work in this way. Yes, that's the whole point. That's the, but the physics. What I have done is to show there's a, if you look at uh, Einstein's field equation, which uh, Masters mentioned, um, the, the, what, what's left out, well, uh, there is a, what, what, the, what Einstein's field equation does, it relates the energy you need to the amount of warping of the space time uh, that you can get. And there's a coupling coefficient. And what the metamaterial does, under certain conditions, um, if you pump the metamaterial with a, with a right kind of electromagnetic field, what happens is that the coupling between energy and, and uh, gravity, uh, the coupling strength increases, which means that uh, if you have a desired amount of warping of the space-time, you can do it with a lot less energy. So that's basically it. It's kind of like Ohm's law, you know, that the current is the voltage over the resistance. Okay? If you decrease the resistance, you get the same amount of current with less voltage. So, you know, that's it's a very simple thing, actually. And uh, I first realized this back in 2011. Well, when I gave the talk at Orlando, uh, and that, in fact, uh, you know, it was an invited talk. General Pete Warden uh, p paid by way, the, uh, the NASA DARPA paid by way, and I gave an invited talk, and I started talking about UFOs. <laughs> <and I shouted laughs> How'd down. that go over? How'd that go over? How did that go over at the time? Well, actually, uh, uh, Sharon Weinberger wrote a, an article about it on the BBC, and so did Gary Beckham. Um, they didn't want to hear about it, which is kind of odd because Eric Davis was there and didn't really jump to my defense. But then Doug Trumbull came, and when Doug Trumbull gave his talk, and of course he's very eminent, right? Everybody uh, adores Doug Trumbull because of Stanley Kubrick's film, Space Odyssey. And Doug Trumbull was the only one to defend what I was saying. <laughs> you know? Jack, give me a sense of how far away this is. We see these tic tacs and it might as well be magic uh you know the, the yeah, our well, pilots are yeah. yeah okay i want if there's one point i want to make especially to like elizondo and to chris mellon and all these guys and of course hal put up knows this but apparently hal put up told me he's having some problem explaining this whole idea of metric engineering to them uh the the the, the, the point is this technology is already there we see the tic tacs Okay, and I think if enough will, uh, enough money was put into this, we could get build our own, say, five years. You know, very short term, because they're already there. We already have a head start. Uh, you mentioned about Putin and the Russians looking at it. Harry Reid had told me he had information that both the Russians and the Chinese were studying it already. I wonder how far ahead they are, and can we catch up? You you travel well, in interesting well, circles. Is, yeah, uh, that's that, look, the Russians. I, the Russians have been monitoring my work actually since the uh, since the nineteen uh, eighties when I when I worked behind the scenes with the uh, Reagan's team to help create the Strategic Defense Initiative, and we were in touch with Russians then. Igor Akshay and you know Esalen was involved with the Russians so uh, the Russians uh, uh, you know they're not as um, uh, skeptical we have a lot of uh, debunkers UFO debunkers here the Russians uh, are smarter than that and they know the stuff is real and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if the Tic Tacs we're seeing now are Russian they may be but the Russians from the future you know, not Russians now but the Russians have taken my ideas very seriously they've uh, you know I've been on their video shows on their uh, St. Petersburg Channel 5 talking about it, and uh, uh, it's a, yeah, I agree with Harry Reid. Uh, the race is on, and uh, we better get hip to it. We better start doing something, or we're all going to be uh, uh, subject to Putin's Air Force. Well, give me a sense of what you could do with one of those uh, craft. If, if uh, the Russians could build a Tic Tac, what it would be capable of doing, and what kind of mastery they would have well, over the rest it, of us. It, as I said, it, it will render all our conventional weaponry impotent and obsolete as uh, Reagan said in one of his speeches I mean obviously uh, look, I mean, Commander Fravor said I want to fly one of these things and we could fly rings around us the dog play couldn't I mean you could also use the warp field as a weapon it's, that we, no conventional weapon can compete against a tic-tac if the tic-tac wants to be used as a weapon
Can you uh, have any insight into why we're even seeing them? As I mentioned in the first hour, the reports I've been getting from government-related folks is that they're almost daily now off the East Coast, yeah. uh, well, almost on I, purpose. I, I don't know for sure, but I, then, then now, we, if you want, we can get back into the Twilight Zone. We can talk about my 1953 contact. Sure. And basically, uh, basically, I was contacted as a child by what I think is the intelligence behind the Tic Tacs we're seeing today. They told me, uh, they said it was a conscious computer on board a spacecraft from the future, and um, and they said that they uh, had selected me and a, and a bunch of other young kids, this is 1953, uh, like Hal Putoff. Apparently Hal Putoff had a similar experience. Yeah, we were talking about it in London about two years ago. And um, and that they were teaching, uh, uh, they were going to teach me their technology so we could build them. In, in what, uh, in what, uh, Masters calls, you know, the Novikov loop in time. So that may be what's going on. You've taken this even a step further, though. I mean, uh, not only time travel, UFOs, but into the physics of consciousness. Let's get yeah, into right. that. Okay. What, what, yeah. what it means for human survival and individual human survival. Yes, yes. Um, uh, now, it turns out the physics of time travel and warp drive, the basic physics is closely connected with the actual physical mechanism for consciousness. So that, um, uh, for example, in Phil Corso's book, The Day After Roswell, he talks about the uh, you know the uh, extraterrestrial pilots using their brain waves to guide the ship and that's quite possible because from the uh, my study of Einstein's field equations in the metamaterial using metamaterials you can control the the uh, the, the gravitational field right around the hull of the tic tac with very small amounts of energy maybe a triple a battery energize a bunny maybe can do it you know it's in principle uh, it makes sense now so uh, and also uh, when we first started the physics consciousness research group you know as part of the CIA remote viewing thing at SRI uh, this guy George Koopman one of our funders he was an army spook uh, and a defense contractor the first thing he told us at PCRG uh, was that the two things the CIA is really interested in are how does consciousness work physically and how do flying sources fly that's what he told it very clearly. And that was our mission. We were given this mission to figure that out. Now, it took me 50 years almost, but I, 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 the mission is accomplished. I figured it out, okay? <laughs> I had a little help, perhaps. But uh, I understand how it works. And I really suggest that Chris Mellon and Eric Davis and Hal Putoff and Elizondo and all these guys, uh, that they better start talking to me in a serious way. I should be you know, part of that group because I know what's going on, and they don't. Uh, Hal has half, a, has half the story. Hal did some work, some papers on metric engineering, which are very fine. But what Hal is talking about there, he's talking about how an observer outside the Tic Tac, looking at the Tic Tac with radar, like they did on the USS Princeton, how they will see the thing. And but I, uh, what I, but what Hal doesn't describe is how do you do this with a small amount of energy? And that's the part that I have solved. That's the essential part. Okay. And I don't really want to hear anybody anymore, you know, in this field scratch their head. How can you have such high G acceleration? See, like for example, if you look at the uh, at the uh, astronauts on the space station, okay, they're weightless. They go, but if you if you look at the uh, motion, the apparent motion of the space station around the Earth, it looks like there's an acceleration. They talk about gravitational acceleration. So there are two kinds of acceleration. There's the apparent acceleration that when you look at an object in the gravitational field, how it kinematically, how it, with radar and, and light rays, how it appears to be accelerating. But on board, there's no acceleration at all. They're weightless. That's called uh, in, in Einstein's theory there's a distinction between what's called kinematic or apparent acceleration and what is called proper acceleration which is measured locally on board the, the craft. Okay, so people are confused about this elementary physics of acceleration. Two different kinds of acceleration. So the, there's no mystery whatsoever about how these Tic Tac is flying. And um, uh, you know, the fact is that uh, just Looking at uh, what's his name Hoffman, uh, Hoffman's going to talk after me. Uh, right. Look at his data. His data is smoking gun proof of what I'm talking about. It's You've been very elementary I physics. 
since the Tic Tac story sort of exploded into the public consciousness, you've written and spoken about it and, and been very vocal in uh, yeah. expressing the frustration you just, uh, just expressed now, but also in defense of the study of this topic. Because, I mean, you know, you've been around it for a long time. It's been bashed and beaten up. And suddenly uh, the public is talking about it. It's in mainstream media. It's being discussed uh, in behind closed doors yeah. in serious ways. It's yeah, quite well, a change. I, I will say something. I, yeah, I've been involved with two people who are connected with the Central Intelligence Agency for a number of years, pretty high up. You know, uh, you know who they are. Yeah. And uh, President uh, Trump has been told about this. My name has been mentioned to the president a couple of times in this context. Um, one of these people have come out on social networks urging the president to meet with me to discuss this. And I think it's a matter of uh, it's a national emergency. Uh, the Russians are ahead of us on this, and maybe the Ch I don't know about the Chinese. I do know about the Russians directly because the Russians are you know they've been in touch with me. So the Russians are taking this very seriously, and uh, you know the our intelligence agencies um, are failing right now because they're not paying attention, they're looking the right way. They're not talking to me. <laughs> they're talking to me about this. Uh, you know, we, Tucker Carlson on Fox does a, a UFO segment once a month or so. Uh, yeah. It's amazing to me that Trump has not said something about it already. But he came came out a week or so ago and said, yeah, I got a briefing on it. Didn't seem like he was that into it. Are you surprised he'd talk about it at all? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, Trump has so much on his plate. And he's got all kinds of things to worry about. But I, I, I think Trump does have to pay attention to this because the Russians, you know, Vladimir Putin is paying attention to it. Okay? And yes. I think that's a, that's a fact. And, uh, and uh, Trump's team has to really get on board here because otherwise uh, we're going to be, you know, in for technological surprise. You've seen the uh, debunkers' arguments as they yeah, try to explain stupid. away the Tic Tac. Yeah. It's birds, yeah, it's stupid. players, okay. it's planes. Yeah, these debunkers, they're just, they're just stupid. <laughs> Either stupid or, or they're working for the enemy. They're debunking because they don't want us to get it. And they think, who profits? If we don't get it and say the Russians get it, or, by the way, I have 300 Iranians tracking my physics on, on social networks. 300 at least. I proof that. Okay. I don't think we want Iran to get this. Smart. They have the, the Iranians have a, a uh, physics department in Tehran, which it does the kind of quantum mechanics, David Bowman quantum mechanics that I use in my theory. I mean, of course, the Iranians, their economy is uh, you know is crashing, so they won't be able to do anything. But the point is, uh, our foreign adversaries are more clued into what's going on than apparently people in our uh, intelligence security agencies, and they better start. You know, getting hip to what I'm talking about, where there could be a lot of trouble. Uh, the exactly. idea of disinformation uh, being spread, that uh, this is a plot by the government, by the CIA, Defense Department, to get Congress to fund something, fund the That's Space stupid. Force, whatever. That's stupid. They're idiots. They're the same as the climate, you know, the same as the, uh, that, uh, the same, the same as, what's the name, uh, uh, Cortez, uh, you know, what's the name, uh, Cortez, whatever her name is, that uh, the, the, great, the Green New Deal, that we're all going to die in 12 years, you know, if we don't, uh, because of cow farts and stuff like that. It's it's ridiculous. People are very stupid, especially when it comes to science. I mean, you know, and it's very frustrating for me because I see through what they're talking about. Um, it, it, we're going to go to a break now. We'll come back and yeah. uh, might even get some questions in from our listeners. Okay. I've got a couple that have been sent to me already that okay. uh, that want to uh, challenge uh, Dr. Jack Sarfati, our guest, on some of his uh, theories. Uh, we're going to go to a break now. Uh, Robbie Williams, party like a Russian. Robbie Williams back in Las Vegas uh, for another engagement. Uh, check it out if you can get a ticket. With George Knapp. The Beatles bring us back into the program. Ticket to ride. You know, I'm thinking about Commander Dave Fravor and his reaction to seeing the Tic Tac as in now famous encounter. He said, I want to fly one of those. I'd settle for riding in the back seat of one of those. And I think most people listening to Coast to Coast tonight would feel the same way. My guest, Dr. Jock's, Jack Sarfati, has written his latest book is called Stargate, Conscious Artificial Intelligence and Time Travel Spacecraft, where he lays down the physics of flying saucers, how these things would work, how these 
time travelers uh, would work uh, and its relationship to uh, in, uh, to consciousness and artificial intelligence. It's uh, good stuff. You can get it as an e-book or an actual physical book. And when we come back, we're going to jump into some of the uh, underlying concepts there and some of the sort of the time travel scenarios that we discussed in our in the first hour and see what Jack has to think about them. We'll be right back. <laughs> It's not marijuana, it's CBD. No prescription, 100% legal, and available to my... Can you give me a sense of why we are even allowed to see the Tic Tacs? What are they doing if they're showing themselves to us? Because because with this technology, obviously, we couldn't see them unless they wanted to. George, George, I'm not... Qual- I don't know. I, I, I don't ask me about the psychology and the motives of the Tic Tacs. <laughs> I don't know that. All I know is how they do it. I just know... I'm just in the engine room. <laughs> I'm just well, they, they called you... The Starship. Yeah. So Somebody I called no you idea. to let you know no about how the technology idea. works, right? What? Somebody called you to let you know that this was what you were supposed to work on. So I'm, I wonder if you've thought about why they wanted that to happen. They, they wanted a certain outcome, I guess. Well, well, because uh, what's his name? The guy Master told you why. Because they're us in the future. And if we don't do what we're doing... They don't exist. It's all a Novikov. It's what Master told the Novikov loop in time. By the way, there is an there's a there's a Star Trek movie. I, I think it's Star Trek Four or Star Trek Five, the one where they go back in time to San Francisco. Right. Remember yeah. that one? And yes. to save the whale. And there's also the rocket scientist who's building the thing that they need for their warp drive. Well, that's me. And it turns out it's very funny because Paramount Pictures had me do a commentary in their special uh, DVD, their director's cut uh, <laughs> of, of that movie where I talk about all this very thing we're talking about. This was done, you know, maybe 10 years ago. If you, if you go on the DVD, look at Paramount Pictures, you'll see Jack Sarfati lectures on time travel. That's just what we're talking about tonight. That was many years before the Tic Tac. So, so that's why we're creating them. What I'm doing right now, what we're doing right now, we're, things are going to happen. It's all destiny. You know, the Destiny Matrix, my, my, one of my um, book that I wrote in 2002 called The Destiny Matrix. Everything that's happening now is creating them. In, in what uh, in what uh, your Dr. Mass is called the Novikov self consistency principle. So, yeah. so that's so that may be why it's happening. And maybe it's happening because you know cause I'm going to be 80 years old in, in September. Hal Puddoff is older than me. Hal Puddoff is like about 83, 85, or something like that. All of the original contactees, they're getting old, so it has to happen before we die. <laughs> or maybe we're you, you have maybe they'll upload our consciousness into, into the Tic Tac. We, we may survive physical death. Who knows? It's possible. Well, that's what you've written about in, in uh, yeah. Stargate. You write about extending human lifespan. Is that the way it's done, is by uh, uploading your consciousness? Yeah, that's right, because consciousness, it turns out, is a very simple physical phenomenon, and it doesn't only have to occur in biological organisms. You know, John Lilly wrote a book called The Scientist. He talks about the solid state entities. You know, uh, consciousness can appear. We can make conscious computers using nanoelectronics. Uh, we can c- create a conscious computer chip. In fact, Intel has a computer chip now that's operate, that's uh, on a scale of just a couple of uh, nanometers, and that chip, I think, can be modified so that it can be conscious just the way we are. And in principle, uh, there's no reason why we can't uh, upload uh, some of our conscious experiences into a computer. And, you know, it has to be a quantum computer, actually what, what I call a post-quantum computer, but I won't get into these details, we don't have much time. But that's all part of the same, part of what I'm talking about. The, the consciousness is a very simple physical phenomenon. There's no mystery about consciousness anymore as a physical phenomenon. There's no mystery about how the Tic Tac flies, and people are just uh, you know, being stupid. They're not, uh, you know, they're not uh, doing their homework. Does consciousness uh, continue even if you don't upload it to uh, a computer? No, 
I don't know. You have to, you have to, because the consciousness, this goes into the Bohmian quantum mechanics, which the Iranians are very into. Um, uh, the word consciousness, there's a physical field. The quantum wave functions are mental fields, are thought fields. So the, the pilot waves have to be attached to some material uh, substrate. So uh, when the brain dies, um, our consciousness dies also, but our consciousness can be quantum teleported in a sense to a machine and then that uh, those conscious experiences can then be downloaded into a, say a clone body for, you know, a clone of ourselves or maybe an android you know like in the, what's that movie avatar things mm -hmm. like that 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 can definitely happen the the the, 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 uh, the physics of it now is well understood by me at least <laughs> it's understood by anybody else but i understand it and that was i was i was asked by the cia to actually work on this back in the 1970s i mean they basically be the, you know, being supported to to do this kind of work and i've actually solved the, the problem i've solved both of these problems i've solved the consciousness problem and the flying saucer or the tic-tac problem well tell me this if you have technology that can bend and manipulate space time i mean you could be et as well couldn't you could they get there from here Hit, get oh, here oh, from yeah, there oh, yeah it's all when i t say warp wormhole it's all the same physics so which is very nice it's actually a pretty simple story it's very it's a very elegant story of course the wormhole you can get any way you want you get any when you want basically now there have been uh, things like stephen hawking's chronology protection conjecture and roger penrose stuff like that but as richard Feynman said a um an ugly fact destroys a beautiful theory and the tic tac <laughs> the tic tac is smoking gun evidence for everything i've been talking about that's my claim there's no other way to explain the tic-tac other than the way I've explained it in terms of simple elementary physics. The physics I need to do this, any smart uh, undergraduate at Caltech or MIT or Princeton can figure this out in, in, in an oral examination. Okay? If you give them enough hints, they can figure it out. It's not hard. It's not hard. And it just shows that the only reason that top physicists have not figured this out before is because of the stigma of thinking about these problems. There's a stigma about thinking about consciousness. There's a stigma about flying sources. And that's been too, uh, it's been very stupid. And it's uh, actually against our national security interests. This is a, a pressing problem right now for national security. And really, you know, I get to sell Donald, the President of the United States, in five minutes. I talked in five minutes because I'm a New Yorker, he's a New Yorker, we're about the same generation, I'm a little bit older than than, uh, than Donald, but I could easily convince him, sell him in five minutes, he's going to fund this thing. And by the way, I've been pushing for the U.S. Space Force since I was working with the Reagan people. I've been calling for the United States Space Force. I've been advocating well, that. I'm with you, I hope they'll hurry up because I'm not getting any younger either. So right. there's, a whole, <laughs> there's a whole bunch of people on the phones with questions for you, Jack. Let's okay, take a couple ahead. of them. First time caller, Angel in Salinas, California. Hi, Angel. You're on with Dr. Jack Sarfati. Hello. Thank you so much for taking my call. I have a couple of very important questions for you, sir. Yes. Now, I'm not sure whether you're aware of a website that was called IsaacFortuneCity.com that was set up specifically to protect him because the materials that he took out. Now, I want to ask you about... Wait, I'm sorry, I, dear. I, I have a hard time understanding. What, what, did, what did you say? About some what? protecting who? Oh, yeah, George, can I, you help me on this? Can you hear her better? A, a website that's called Isaac at FortuneCity.com. I don't now, know anything about what you're talking about, dear. Okay, well, if you get a chance to look at it later, I want to talk to you about the substrate material yeah. um, and the Tic Tac. Yeah. In, on this other website, it explains that he was working with a lot of supercomputers, other scientists, mathematicians, that computers couldn't handle this. It had a lot to do with the symbols. Now, you were talking about consciousness, and this is exactly yeah. this. You know what, dear? Let me, let, me, let me tell everybody right now, because this sounds interesting. I'd like to know more about it. But just contact me by email. My email is very simple. It's just my name, Jack Safadi, all small letters, one word, no, Jack Safadi at gmail.com. And anyone, like, I'd like to hear more about this, but, you know, we have so little time. Yeah, I, I'll tell you what, yeah, I agree, Angel. I think you're hitting with, uh, Jack with something that he's not familiar with, so maybe you could uh, email with him and he yeah, could answer your that, question. That sounds interesting. It was something about metamaterials, substrate. You know, right. We're going to go west material. of the Rockies. This is recovered material. West of the Rockies, Joseph in San Diego. Hi, Joseph. 
Well, good evening, gentlemen. This is very fascinating. I'm fascinated that, that sure somehow that. or other consciousness that 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 we, we don't even completely understand. The, no, you don't understand it. I understand it. But it <laughs> I understand it completely. I spent ten years in India as a celibate monk. Um, I I've, I've been there, and consciousness comes from what's called the Atma. In no, the no, okay, I want to hear this. Let's not waste time on it. I don't want to hear about <laughs> spirituality and Buddhism and all that. Those are all very nice things, but you're confusing the psychology and spirituality and the morality of consciousness with the physics of consciousness. They're two different things. The physics of consciousness is a very elementary, it's as simple almost as gravity, okay? It's a very simple phenomenon. It's an emergent phenomenon, certain conditions, and I don't want to hear about Atma or Buddha or any of this, okay? Because that has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. It's, it's it's okay in its own domain of discourse, but it's not what I'm talking about. I think we're yeah. I think we're on two different planes there, Joseph. Thanks for the call, Manny, east of the Rockies. Hi, Manny. You're on with Jack Sarfati. Go ahead. Hello, Manny. Hi, uh, Doctor Sarfati. I'm a big fan of yours. Would you consider Sean Carroll a disinformation agent? Oh, uh, again, he was the kind of brand. Are you on a, I think he's on are, are you, who, What's the Hi. name? Who? Dr. Sparfati, would you consider Sean Carroll a disinformation agent? Uh, Sean Carroll? Yeah, I know Sean Carroll. He, he, he's very good. Uh, he writes, uh, uh, he's at Caltech, and I know his books. I've met him, actually. And uh, what he says is fine, but I don't know what his opinions are. On, I mean, Sean Carroll has to make, play the game in academia, so he can't talk about consciousness very much, or he can't talk about falling sources and, and expect to get promoted. In fact, I know Sh Sean Carroll had some, had some political problems uh, at Caltech early, but I guess he's okay now. Was he at Chicago? forget but what what about you and carol go ahead buddy are you aware of me uh, Lenny Suskind's work on EPRER. I know, wait, wait a minute. First of all, Lenny and I worked together, okay? I, fir I first met Lenny Suskind at Cornell. We were graduate students together with Johnny Glogauer in 1963. Uh, I worked we, on the first paper Lenny ever published was work that he did with me and Johnny Glogauer on, on time, uh, in quanta time operators and phase operators and quantum mechanics. So I know I, 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 I used to stay at his house in Berkeley. I know him very well, and I actually am the first guy to get ER equals EPR. It's in my book, Space Time and Beyond 1975, I had that idea. Okay, it's published in the book Space Time of the Earth. It was a popular book. Wrote a couple hundred, uh, sold a couple hundred thousand copies. It was the basis of several movies. Uh, and uh, yes, and I'm very familiar with Lenny's concept. Lenny took it a lot further, and uh, I, I just had sort of intuitions, kind of a precognitive remote viewing of ER equals EPR. But I basically just, uh, was the first guy to talk about it. I know about the holographic universe. Yes, and I think it's good work. Lenny's a very smart guy, and uh, uh, it's no coincidence that he that he did what he did does that uh, answer your manny, question manny does that answer your Just question one final, one final question dr Sharfati. i would like to ask you if there is a graviton graviton interaction and uh, okay this is uh, this is again if you want email me because this is uh this is uh, irrelevant to what i'm i mean the graviton graviton interaction nothing to do with what i'm talking about that's uh you know it's, it's an important topic it's nice but it's not real it's, it's in other words what I'm talking about is a lot simpler than graviton-graviton interactions, and graviton-graviton interactions don't really play much of a role in how the Tic Tac flies, not directly. Thanks, Manny. Appreciate it. We're going to go to Thomas in La Jolla. Hi, Thomas. Hi. I live in La Jolla. I, used to, I lived on Bonaire Street. I went to UCSD yeah. in La Jolla. Hi, George. Thank you for taking my call. Jack, I look forward to obtaining your new monograph, Stargate. The question I have, Jack, is can we develop this Tic Tac technology cheaply? You yeah, know, instead well, of throwing know, cheaply, yeah, you know, it, I bought it you cheaply. Know, how cheaply? I, I think we could develop it for the cost of a single aircraft carrier. We could develop it very easily. If we had, you know, about $10 billion, we could develop it. We could, maybe even for $100 million. I don't know. But until we try, we, where there's a will, there's a way. Money is not the main thing. It's, a, it's, not, it's mainly developing the solid state physics of metamaterials. That's the main thing. And also, there's something called, we need what are called high room temperature superconductors 
is which is part of the uh, the metamaterial effect I'm talking about, and there's something called the Froelich effect, uh, and uh, it's uh, I think we can do it relatively cheap. But let's put it this way: we spend how many tens of hundreds of millions of dollars on hot fusion? We never got hot fusion, right? We took for you know, and we could. I'd say if, even if it's ten billion, you change the world. That's not. Oh yeah. That's not oh, yeah. much. Oh yeah, of course. It's going to change everything. And by the way, you know, uh, it will. Uh, it might say it can solve the energy crisis. But I don't want to get into that right now. We don't have time. Um, it, it, Jack, what do you think about the reports that there's debris, that there's crash debris? Are we talking about debris from time machines? Well, if uh, yeah, it has to be. If I'm right, yes, these are time machines, all the debris. Oh, by the way, uh, while we're at it, I can't mention the guy's name, but I have a close friend who actually handled the debris. You know, that fits in with Corso, where, he, where Corso says, uh, my friend actually, he was working for the CIA, he was contracted with the CIA, and this is in the 1960s. And we're going to probably interview him in our podcast if he goes public. He's a very prominent person. He's a member of a very exclusive uh, men's club in San Francisco, which you might guess what that name of that club is. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, he actually, uh, for a week, had actual possession material. He tried to hammer it, you know, he, he had the, the strut, you know, the strut with the symbols on it that Corso talks about, and it had it, amazing properties. It, it, it was almost anti, it almost floated. And uh, so in any case, um, yes. So uh, the answer is, I, I, uh, yeah, I, the answer is yes. <laughs> I had uh, one of our listeners, Larry, had... Uh... Before, I reach for my phase or I reach for my delete button. It's irrelevant to what I'm talking about. See, people tend to overcomplicate things that are very simple. It's just noise in the signal. We don't need a fifth force. There's no force involved, okay? That's nonsense. I mean, there may be a fifth force, but it has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. It's total muddling, total confusion, because people just don't understand physics, physics very well. Your message, physics, then, is... Even a lot of physicists don't understand what they're doing very well. See, when you're doing physics, there are two things you can do. If you're a theoretical physicist, you can do the mathematics. And you can do a lot of stuff in the mathematics without understanding how the mathematics relates to the experiments. And people do experiments that don't understand the mathematics and vice versa. And things are very compartmentalized, almost like the intelligence community. The left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. So even some of these pundits, they may be very good in doing the mathematics of general relativity without understanding the physical meaning of it. Some understand um, both, like, you know, Kip Thorne understands everything. Kip Thorne <laughs> uh, and John Wheeler did, but a lot of them don't. Uh, give us a pitch about your Stargate, your latest, your latest work, your latest version of it. Well, what it is, it's really an update of my book, The Destiny Matrix, and it talks a lot about the Tic Tac and everything we're talking about tonight. I just elaborate on it in more detail. I try to keep it popular. I'm going to actually work. Uh, I'm upgrading the book Stargate for next year, and I really have to write down some uh, lectures, you know, for physics students, you know, actually do, you know, with the mathematics. So, uh, but the basic thing about the metamaterials is that what you want to do uh, you have to slow down the speed of light in the metamaterial. You slow it down. It's called index of refraction. And uh, uh, you, you need very large indices of refraction. And when you have a large index of refraction, what that does, that enhances the coupling of energy to the gravitational field. Because I don't, want, uh, I don't know how much detail. Let's see. We have. Uh, yeah, how, we're. How many uh, minutes do I have? I don't want to get into the mathematics of it. Yeah, we're, uh, we're about out. So, Jack Sarfati, always good to have you here. In Interesting stuff. I, I hope people check out your, the links to your work and the Sklargate book, and uh, I look forward to having you back soon. I think you should have me on for a whole three hours sometime so I can get into this more detail of this. Enough interest. I'm going to listen to, uh, to was it Hoffman? Because I, I Hoffman, read right. Hoffman's paper, and yes. it's very good stuff what they're doing. It's, you know, they're the experimentalists, they're the Eddingtons to my, uh, to my, you know, the, the, to well, my theory. <laughs> I agree. Together the evidence very well. And, I'll uh, pass along your thanks for. Forum and uh, thanks for being here, and I look forward to having you back on soon. We're going to a uh, break now with uh, the Four Tops, and Rich Hoffman will be here uh, in just a moment. Stick around for more Coast to Coast AM.